Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of your favorite channel. Radio, Cheating Stories. Today, I'm going to share a story of a girl whose name is Scarlett and she is a regular poster here on Reddit. So before moving towards her story, I would like to ask you guys to please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and press the bell like and for updates. So she says my name is Scarlett. I was 19 years old and I'm very beautiful like my mother. I love my mother very much. But now she's not in this world and I miss her a lot, but she didn't die by destiny. It was her ambition and love that he had her killed. My mom committed suicide. And at that time, I was in the same room and I was only 11 years old. I saw her doing that and that was the most painful day of my life. My mom think that I was asleep but I was awake and I had watched her commit suicide. But after that, my life is completely changed. My mother is not a poor woman. She had left a lot of money for me. And now my life is my home. I can go out. I want to be normal. And I think that if I become friends with normal people, then my life would be normal. I'm beautiful. I've got money. So everyone loves me. One day I was at a party when an old man is watching me without blinking. And after a while I'm feeling a little about what he, you know, he was doing, why he was staring at me like this. I discuss it with my friend. She said, maybe he likes you and I know him. He's a rich man. Maybe he wants to be your sugar daddy. I said to my friend that I do not need a sugar daddy. I'm not a poor girl and I got everything I wanted to go from there. But then he came near me and sat beside me on a chair. He asked me, can I buy you a drink? And I was like, okay, if you want to, I don't mind it and we began to talk about it and he was very funny in a 15 minute conversation. I had laughed her like seven times from my heart. You know, he had a very good sense of humor. He is not funny. I think he got a good sense of humor. Maybe his name is Alfred and he's 50 years old. We are having a good conversation and then he asked me, can I drop you home? I said, okay, we're in the same car and it was the night it was late at night. I was a little worried, you know that, what am I doing with a stranger? I have just met him two hours ago and now I am with him in a car, but he didn't do anything. He simply just asked me that. Do I have a good phone number? And I gave him after three months of dating one day he asked me that. Will you marry me? I was shocked because I was not expecting this. He's a good man. He is wealthy and he knows how to treat a girl. He was so gentle. He's not wish he's a gentleman but marriage maybe I'm not ready for it, but he was on his knees and asking me to marry him. The first thing which came to my mind was that he's a 50-year-old man and I'm just 19. How can we marry? He said that age is just a number and love does not calculate it. If you want to be with me, you have to marry me. I said to him that I will, okay, think about it and then I will give you my final answer. But at night, why on earth I'm missing him because we used to talk this time on texting or video call or maybe on voice call. But we were together at this period and I'm now sitting alone in my house. I want to call him. I want to text him, but he clearly said that if you want to be with me, if you want a little piece of my personality, you have to marry me. Otherwise I do not have those patience in me and I will not even text you. After three long days, I just realized that I can't live without him. Maybe he had to do something with me. Maybe it's some kind of some kind of spell he has cast on me. But now I can't live without him because I'm impressed by the one thing and it was that he doesn't even touch me. He said if we get physical, we get physical after marriage. He told me that he had a wife before, but they were together only for five years and then they got divorced. I am an unpredictable girl. And after one week, we were standing in front of our friends and family and we were taking our vows and when he asked by the priest that now you can kiss your bride. And I was shocked by that because it was the best kiss of my life. It's like the some 20 years old boy who was kissing me and I totally fell in love with him. And now we are living together. It is our little love story and it's very beautiful. He said that I have a son but he doesn't live with me. 
so you don't have to worry about it. The house is yours and you got all the privacy in your house. He has a very big house and a digital lock system and an underground swimming pool. We were having the best days of our life. But you guys are thinking that what got me to this point and a young girl like me who loves her mother so much and her mother committed suicide in front of her. And now she's enjoying her life and married a 50 years old man and saying that I am happy and I'm having the best days of my life because all this is just for revenge because this is the man who deceived my mother who cheated on my mother and who left her alone with a disease is not my father because I am not the real daughter of my mother. She found me from somewhere, but she didn't tell me the whole story. She said that I was in pain and I found you at that particular point. I thought that maybe you became a medicine for me and I will forget everything but it is so hard. My mother was truly in love with Alfred and now I have to take revenge on my mother. I know I am going too far. I know I'm making it too unreal, you know, and I know that it is not the right thing to do. But I have no other option because he is the man who not only left my, my mother but also killed my first love. I was in love with the boy and we were having some misunderstanding. But one day he said to me that if you love me, just give me a call by 8 o'clock. If you give me a missed call, it will be a sign to me that want to be with me and I will get take care of all the problems and I will get you in my life. But I didn't call him because I was in so much grief because of my mother's death. And I can't be with him because I can't do this. I cannot carry on with my life and forget about my mother who died in so much pain. No, I have to avenge her first, but the boy is gone. Now he said that if you give me a call and you select me over your dead mother, then I will be there for you. But I did not select him. And that's why he left the city. I think he left the city for some kind of higher education or something. His name was Samuel and I loved him so much. But now my life is stuck and I only have one purpose. I have to give Alfred a very painful death. He doesn't even imagine how can I do this to him. It was two months of my marriage and he used to say that this was our honeymoon. He took me to many places and we were very happy. You know, we were very happy together. But now I must do what I came here to do. I had to take revenge on him. I had to give him a painful death on my mother's last day. She was so sick that she can't even drink water properly. Doctors said that taking so much anxiety and tension, her stomach is badly hurt and sometimes it is not a disease that kills a man. It is anxiety and it is tension that kills someone. But we have to find an excuse that this has happened and that, that's why he's not anymore. But I know that whenever someone committed suicide, there's had to be a killer who compels him to do this. And my mother's killer is Alfred. So he deserves what he will have. In some days, I start giving him a slow poison that slowly destroyed all the vital organs. He's already 50 years old and that's why nobody will suspect that it is my doing a 50-year-old man eventually getting sick is not an unusual thing. But I must say that he is a desperate man. He was in so bad condition that he was on his deathbed still. He wants me to. Now I am fed up. And I was thinking in my mind that when he left this world and I become free, I do not want his wealth. What I want is just nearly happen one day. He said, I don't think I will survive in this world. How bad luck is that? You know that I got the beautiful girl, my dreams and my health is decreasing that I'm going to die. I said no, you are not going to die. Just think positive everything will be fine. He said no, I can feel it. I will die in a few days. I got pain in every inch of my body. I think it's time to call my son. He's mad at me because I was not a good father, but I have to see him before my death. He's my only son and I love him so much. I said, okay, you can call him. I do not have any problem but I assure you Alfred that you are not going anywhere. You are going to be okay. I am with you. He kissed my hands and said, why haven't we met when I was young and healthy? I was thinking in my mind that thank God we haven't met. My mom told one day that she was truly in love with the man who possessed her heart. 
She used to describe Alfred so beautifully that even those who is listening will fall in love with them. I must say love is beautifully sent and the lover is the most powerful creature on earth. I was a lover too, but it has been three years now and Samuel had someone else in his life because he may be married to a, you know, beautiful girl and he had a baby. I am left with nothing when Alfred will die. No one suspects me. The police will not come after me because I had planned everything with my brain. I know that after that my life is just my own life. I got money from my mom's heritage and I got money from Alpha too. Maybe this house is also mine. Then I will think something about my life and maybe I do some kind of job, start a little business and like my mother, I want to adopt some babies and spend time with them and dedicate my life to them. This is my plan after taking revenge on my mom. But one day when Alfred said that my son is coming today and I saw his son. I was completely shocked. I was left with no words and he was also shocked because he is none other than Samuel. Samuel is the son of Alfred and now I am his stepmother. He was also knowing and shocked that his father married a teenage girl because Alfred informed him that I'm getting married but didn't tell him that I'm just 19. Samuel didn't care that his father was in a very bad condition. He just screamed loud and loud. You are a shameless person and I was not expecting this from you. Then he goes into his room and I was shaking my legs, you know? My God. I was so afraid of his reaction. What will he think about it? He will think that I do the right thing to leave school because this girl doesn't deserve my love and my life. He must be thinking that I must pluck a bloody gold digger. Maybe I was afraid to go in front of him while I didn't do anything wrong. What I did for my mother then I thought I don't need to be afraid. What am I afraid of? One day we face each other in the evening. When I passed by, he asked me to sit by his side for a while. He said you are my stepmother. When my father told me that I got married, I had no interest in his marriage. And I did, you know, I wanted to know who he married. Did you marry my father? Because you like older men or something? Did you marry him? Because I rejected you. Your mother knows you did well, right? You marry your father. It's a shame. Are you happy with the big house that you got? He was taunting me. He was making fun of me and he was kind of enjoying my situation, but I didn't speak a word because everything will go against me. I just simply said to him that I love him so much. And you are my only love, my first love and my last love. And I can't say anything. What happened is not my fault. Maybe it's destiny Samuel. Get furious all of a sudden and said, I was also in love with you and ready to do anything for you. But he rejected me. I said, I didn't reject you but you will never understand. He said that try then try to explain it. And I said it's complicated. After two weeks, Alfred left this world and the doctor said the same thing. All his vital organs stop working properly. That's why he's dead. Maybe it's the alcohol he drinks all his life or maybe some kind of disease. But your father is no more Samuel and I were quiet all the time. After one week at the funeral, I left his house and shut my phone off. I do not want to have any kind of conversation with him. I was back to my life. I had also shifted from my old place and got a new little house and I'm heading together to an orphanage because I want to adopt, you know, one or maybe two years taller. Maybe I can be with someone again. But not now. The path is clear between us that I was guilty that I'm the killer of his father and now I cannot be with him. This is the reality. This is life. We do have grudges that decide our life. I can't overcome this. But what I have done, I had done for my mother, but I am a killer. And this is my life story. I am a mother of one-year-old Ross and it's like I'm leaving my mom's life again. Like Cher adopted me and I have also adopted Ross and I'm spending my life taking care of her and my life normal. Now I want to be normal and now everything is normal to me.